No matter who they are, even the manager, anybody who's got to be told to stay in the car. The test is not comfortable, to be honest. They use like a kind of uh, small stick in your nose. What, Leroy? Eight weeks away. We have summer is four weeks maximum, five, but eight weeks. A lot of work has to go in for the next three and a half, four weeks. Hopefully they're ready. Yeah, it's nice to come back, of course. We start with that news that all Premier League and English Football League and Women's Super League match will be postponed until April 3rd at the earliest. Meeting you must stay at home, protect our NHS and save lives. Yeah, can you hear me? We're going to do a warm up and then just a quick strength circus. These are unprecedented times for sport across the world. We'll be discussing how coronavirus has affected football and where the game goes. You'll be back soon, Rodri. You'll be back on the football page. This is easier. Hopefully. It's starting to sound like we're coming back, isn't it? The, the momentum's building. I hope so. I hope so. We haven't seen Premier League football for 10 weeks, but within 24 hours, Project Restart will finally be up and running. Yes, Dino. Hello, sir. You get your treadmill all sorted, have you? Yeah, thank you for sending it up. That's all right, mate. That's all right, mate. Got to keep you fit. Yeah, box. Back to the key, box to normal routine. Let go, Johnny Boy. Johnny Boy. Oh, yeah. Johnny boy, show me, show me your hair. Yes, <laughs> Gabby. Hi, everyone. Hi, Max. Hi, Max. Hi, Max. Hi, okay. Hi, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I like your beard. Thank you. That's to here, and then to that fourth end of the fourth there. That's the car. So the car will then actually still be on. The car will come here. Yeah. So when we're running up with normal business, yeah. that's when I said we'd have to put a stewarding plan overlay. We're expecting the um, Premier League setup to arrive about eight o'clock. They'll come on site and start building what will be the testing centre. Um, obviously, there's been issues around where we locate that because we don't know how long it's going to be here we think for a substantial amount of time initially. So we've had to set it up in a place where it won't interfere with normal business should that resume in the, in the coming weeks and months. So this was the best location, obviously because of the size. I think, I think the legs, if they fall about there. So it came through from a Premier League. Testing could be now this Sunday and Monday. If a Return to protocol gets passed at the shareholders' meeting. Any club can begin small group training Tuesday afternoon if they want. Our protocol, unless it changes today, is that we will then begin our second phase of screening. And I think that's a two-day to a three-day operation. So it looks like they return a bit later, but we just want to go the extra standard. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing, mate? You okay? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad at all. Oh, oh, hi, guys. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, brilliant, thanks. Kevin, thanks very much. It's made my week. Oh, you're welcome, Again. sir. Have a, have a good week. Enjoy with the wife. Have some fun. Have, have some wine. <laughs> Try to, yeah. See you. Bye bye. Thanks, Kevin. All the best, mate. Very quiet on your own. Very quiet. Watching your own shadow. <laughs> Different aspects of the job for me as well. I'm actually losing weight. <laughs> when you sit in the pod, you don't do nothing, do you? <laughs> so now I'm walking around everywhere. I'm losing a bit. I feel a lot healthier.
basically, guys, we're gonna we're gonna do the t uh, the test tomorrow afternoon. We're gonna let you know the different timings that you do have. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Yeah. Mm. This is the first main day, really, where we're we're starting to take the building back, if you like, and get it ready for operation. The thing is, though, you get so used to working from home that all of a sudden you get back to the office and <laughs> you try to work out your equipment. So now no players are allowed in the building at the moment? No, there'll be nobody allowed in the building with the exception of the team that we signed in this morning and only under the Premier League guidance when they start to come back for training will they be able to use certain uh, routes through the building. I'd say that'll even include you know, taped lines on the floor, markers, arrows, no entry signs. So it's not a normal use of the building by any means. You're aware that from 12 today, we're going to start testing of about 40 members of the first team short management and then backroom staff. The one thing I've got to stress is they've got to stay in their cars. It doesn't matter who they are, even the manager, anybody who's got to be told to stay in the car. Yeah. Any questions? Right, number two. Thank you. Just do the registration date, uh, number of the vehicle, and that's, that's it then. On an email, if, if you were just. Eight weeks. Away. Away. You can sum it is four weeks maximum, five, but eight weeks. Very unusual. The COVID test is, is really easy. They they use like a kind of uh, small stick and they use it in your mouth and in your nose and that's when they, they take the, the uh, I don't know, the proof uh, to the test and, and they examine and they, they say they analyze. The test is not comfortable to be honest, but it's okay, it's, it's what is it, so uh, we do it and we will do it more time. This is all the kit for the players, um, boots and everything. This is players and staff. So they're going to pick that up today when they, after they've had the testing. All okay? No, all okay. That is Max. Finish for today. So as you've seen today, um, all the players and a number of the uh, key backroom staff and management have gone through that first cycle of testing and now will await the results before we go through a second phase of testing later on in the week. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Premier League clubs have voted unanimously to let players restart training in small groups from tomorrow. It's the first step towards resuming the season, which was suspended two months ago, with Liverpool just two victories away from Europe. Right, OK. Perfect. And the arrows are self-explanatory, aren't they? So the access route is going to be where this is marathon bet. They're going yeah. to come across the path, up the steps to here. Yeah. So clearly, um, when we come into groups, what we want to remind everybody of um, is the social distancing aspect. 
So all around the perimeter of the pitch, all four pitches on the tarmac, we're going to have sprayed uh, the social distancing two meter you know, reminders and they'll be sprayed onto the, onto the pathway. We'll then indicate a route from the pitch at the end of training to take you into the indoor pitch. We'll drop some arrows, which are also spray painted on, down the roadway and across. So it's nice and clear. People can keep the distance, follow the arrows. It eliminates losing time, wondering where people are going. So it's nice and straightforward from the minute you arrive and parking up to the minute you leave the pitch and go on the indoor before you get back in your cars and travel off site. What we're doing is cleaning every room in the first team. Once one of the operatives have done the clean, then I will go and inspect. Then we'll place the sticker on the wall to let the client know that this room has been cleaned and checked. Ready for the team to train uh, on this pitch here, pitch one. We're going to erect two small marquee type structures, one in between these two power boxes, and then subdivide it so you can set up with medical equipment, GPS trackers, water and hydration type drop stations and an equipment store. The requirements are to do as much as you can out outside. You're limited to a number of rooms which we have to put on a plan, such as the toilet, the medical area and the gym. Those are the only areas and an access route through the building. Everything else needs to be done pitch side, uh, hence why we're putting these covers up. So the logistics is, come in, if you need the medical you go, if not you come into the gym, you filter down here, you have your designated area, and then once we're done, John, let's, let's go from out that way. That's it. Straight past trial, straight into the boot area, turn yeah. right, don't sit on the chairs and I'm going to rub them off, yeah. straight out. Perfect. So today we're going to do the stinger the setup is the last day. Okay boys, so everyone on your fixtures. Yeah, the guys have hopefully kept themselves at a good level um, with the training plans that we sent them and all the gym work that we've been doing with them. Unfortunately, we don't have long before uh, we have to play a Premier League game, so a lot of, a lot of work has to go in for the next three and a half, four weeks to prepare them for the, for the game. So hopefully, hopefully they're ready. Usually we will come in on an eight week cycle. We will sanitize the entire building. The solution we use is a bit unique. It delivers a log killer seven, which is 99.9999% pathogens gone in seconds. Not only will it kill anything on it in seconds, but it will remain working for over eight weeks. So normally we will come in in an eight week cycle, but obviously because these times are a little bit different, we're coming in a bit more frequently. When you consider you can get 150,000 bacteria on a pinhead and typically a virus is about 10,000 times smaller than a bacterium you're looking for a needle in a haystack which is where the, the process we use is ideal because what the droplets will do they'll wrap around all over inside they'll penetrate these niches all over and very very quickly we'll sanitize that So this area, this will be the recovery area. So you can see we've set six stations up, sanitise the entire pitch, and then the players will literally cool down, stretch off, there'll be foam roller type exercises going on in here before they finally finish here and then exit to head to the cars and then head off site.
Right, so we got, I'm just going to put this on the Ronin so that we can check that this will be one of the robotic cameras with the gamepad. Um, it's definitely not how we normally do draining. We're having to work to an ever-changing plan about where we can and can't be on site. So the red zone is an area of uh, the CFA here, which um, we as the content team are not allowed to uh, be in that zone whilst players and essential staff are on site. But because we think there's going to be so much interest coming from uh, the fans wanting to see as much as they can of people, we're looking to get a number of robotic cameras at the side of the training pitches that are going to be used by the players tomorrow. So if I... OK, so is that still working? Yeah. yeah, that's wicked. That's really, really good. So, Rick, I've got you here. I need to try and get a, a way of having the phone mounted to something here. Yeah, pop a two to control. Yeah, just to let you know the first five are in anyhow, okay. They're in good spirits when they drop. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah, they seem in good spirits. I think they're uh, getting used to the uh, the ways and means of how it's going now. Come on, Leroy. Can you just speak to the doctor, mate? I'll just take your temperature, OK? We're all sort of getting back into the, the routine now. So what we're on today is uh, each small group of five players coming back at specific times, all obviously split so that we can ensure that all the COVID-19 measures are in place. They'll come in through the, uh, the main gates. They'll then go to Max, the club doctor, the subject to a temperature test. Morning, John, how are you, mate? Are you all right? Yeah, not bad, Paul, not bad. Doctor's coming now, ah, here he is. Feel okay? Good, yeah. Good lad. I'm checking the temperature of the players to complete their uh, medical screen, daily medical screening to questionnaire and then temperature and eventually medical check if we feel anything uh, wrong. Must be a big change for them as well, the players. Imagine they live on a set routine, don't they? And this has totally thrown their life out. The players park in the car park. They have to be three spaces apart. They then get out of their cars wearing their, their gloves and masks into through the first team building. And each group arrives, five players at 15 minute intervals. So for their warm up, the first group goes into the gym uh, for their 15 minute exercise and warm up and the second group goes into the indoor hall and they do their exercise uh, and warm up routine there. What are we doing here, then in the indoor hall, because we're not allowed to use the changing rooms, we've set out 25 chairs at two metre spacings for the coaches and the players. Once they've done their warm up to be able to sit down put their boots on and get themselves ready then to go out on pitch for their, their training. Never filmed like this before, but if, um, if we're close enough to the camera, and we get on the gaming controller, we should, with a bit of luck, be able to control it. There we go. So we're finally back in training. Um, it's been a long break. Obviously, the world's changed so much. Um, 
so much work has gone in behind the scenes just to get to this stage now of getting everyone back to training. So many departments have been working non-stop and working with the Premier League and working with all these restrictions to try and try and make sure that we can get back just so many obstacles to make sure we do everything right, to do everything safely. We look after the players. The medical team have been working incredibly hard to get all the players screened and checked. I know all the players are really looking forward to being back together and training together, but we have to be careful how we train them. They've had a long period of time off. So many of them have been stuck in apartments or without the correct uh, space to be able to train how they would normally train. So this is like the longest break they've had for so long. Um, so now we have to build them up very carefully. Well, it's looking like a long, hot bank holiday Monday, staying dry with plenty of warm sunshine and just a light breeze later. The highs are 22 Celsius. It's quite interesting coming in today and seeing the kind of level of detail that the club have gone to to make sure that absolutely everything is cleaned, sanitised, that people can distance from one another. It's, it's incredible, really, that in such a short space of time they've completely changed the operation and the way it works. Pep, you've uh, you've been at the CFA for a few days. Is it good to be back here? Yes, of course. Especially today with uh, the first sunny sunny day. Yeah, it's nice to come back. Of course, we don't do anything special. So the special are the people, the doctors, nurses, scientists, cleaners. In a special situation around the world, you have to adapt. Pep, thank you so much for. You're very welcome. Thank you. You here? Yeah, thank, thank you. you thank you, guys. How's it okay? Thank Take you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, good. Premier League clubs have voted unanimously to resume contact training. Under the plan, squads will be able to train as a group and engage in tackling while minimising unnecessary close contact. So, Premier League clubs have approved a return to contact training. So, we are on the way to Project Restart. We'll keep you right up to date. Take off. When we knew we were going to train all together, for sure, it's, it's, a bit, it's a good news for us because football is about the team. In terms of packed lunches, this is class. Proper takeaway. It's good that we've come through this first phase and now we can adjust the training to make it even more realistic and, and help the players prepare. What we have done is a tough, tough work. We have two more weeks to prepare for our first game. 